And I'm going to read some of the liars here that came out in the past that were well-funded by the big foundations and are still held up by some of the ecologists today as the pioneers for, for giving out the, the bad news to the public. And this, uh, and I'll put these sites up, everything I mentioned on my website at cuttingthroughthematrix.com at the end of the show. And it, this is called Busted Predictions from Brazen Prophets. It says, what is most astounding about the human race is that people like Paul Ehrlich, and that's a great pal, of course, of Holdren, that's now uh, appointed to be the science czar for the U.S. It says, who predicted vast coastlines would be evacuated due to rotting fish by 1980, or Oppenheimer with a black blizzard of sand covering a continent by 1995. People who have long proven to be arrant failures at making predictions are still invited to speak or write. Some commentators still mention their name or quote them with a straight face. They say that these are psychopaths. You see, psychopaths never have any shame. It says, surely it takes a special kind of braggadocio and a certain delusion of grand proportions for these would be leaders to appear in public after predictions like these, and yet they do. And here's, here's some are adapted and are rearranged from Fox News. Uh, and this is a Paul Ehrlich speech at the British Institute for Biology, September 1971. By the year 2000, the United Kingdom will simply be a small group of impoverished islands inhabited by some 70 million hungry people. If I were a gambler, I would take even money that England will not exist in the year 2000. And then in 10 years, uh, all important animal life in the sea will be extinct. Large areas of coastline will have to be evacuated because of the stench of dead fish. And that was the Ehrlich speech uh, of an Earth Day, the United Nations Earth Day 1970. By 1995, the greenhouse effect would be desolating the heartlands of North America and Eurasia, with horrific drought causing crop failures and food riots by 1996. The Platte River of Nebraska would be dry, while a continent-wide black blizzard of prairie topsoil will stop traffic on interstates, strip paint from houses, and shut down computers. That was Michael Oppenheimer, published in Dead Heat, St. Martin's Press, 1990. These are the heroes of this movement. Then, if present trends continue, the world will be 11 degrees colder by the year 2000. This is about twice what it would take to put us in an ice age. That was Kenneth E.F. Watt, no relation to mine, in Earth Day 1970. At that time, you see that their guess was an ice age. They're, they're going to bank on that. Arctic specialist Bernd Balkan said a general warming trend of the North Pole is melting the polar ice cap and may produce an ice-free Arctic Ocean by the year 2000. That was in the Christian Science Monitor, June 8, 1972. Using computer models, researchers concluded that global warming would raise average annual temperatures nationwide 2 degrees by the year 2010. Associated Press, May 15, 1989. By 1985, air pollution will have reduced the amount of sunlight reaching Earth by one half. Life magazine, January 1970. Back with more after this break. Hi folks, I'm back. We're cutting through the matrix, just cutting through the reality here from these gurus, these science gurus that were put out in the 60s, 70s and 80s and 90s to give us all this bad news about anthropogenic global warming, man-made global warming, uh, which we had to believe in, you see, in order for the carbon taxes to get pushed to set up a worldwide bureaucratic structure to tie all economies together under their jurisdiction, much like the, the way that they got the EU together, same kind of thing. And it says here, too, isn't that, here's another, another great prediction here. It says, uh, within a few years, children just aren't going to know what snow is. Snowfall will be a very rare and exciting event. And it's linked to more detail of this article here. And that was David Viner, a member from the, the famous East Anglia University Climate Research Unit in the year 2000. The guys that put all the fake emails out uh, and uh, getting thousands, well, millions uh, in grants given to them to put out more lies for this very important agenda that we, we must all believe in. You see that we are the problem. And then in June 2007, Tim Flannery warned Brisbane that its water supplies are so low they need desalinated water urgently, possibly in as little as 18 months. Last summer, Brisbane recorded the wettest December in 150 years. 
But of course, who could forget the Australian BOM, which predicted that the national outlook for total rainfall over spring, September to November is neutral for most of the country, which was promptly followed by record downfalls and widespread floods, with some areas getting 400% of the average rainfall. The only part of the country that the BOM predicted uh, whether the normal spring was in southwest uh, West Australia, which recorded one of its fr- uh, driest springs since measurements began. <laughs> so they're wrong and everything here. But uh, this is quite a good site. Just got some, um, it's got articles from the Club of Rome that came up with the idea of global warming. The guys that said that would fit the, del- the bill, you know, t- to make us all buckle under and they'd bring in an authoritarian system and other, other little articles as well. So I'll put this up tonight for you to peruse and have a good laugh at. But unfortunately, even though we laugh away, you see it's now the law. It's the law. These are the new priests, you see, of science. And they're getting all the backing of the big boys who put them there. They have a very important job to do to get all this rammed down our brains, all this nonsense. Now, the Met Office in Britain was also getting huge grants and so on for global warming. And it says here from the Mail Online, uh, Met Office knew the big freeze was coming, but hushed it up. It says the Met Office warned ministers that politicians didn't expect an exceptionally cold winter, but then kept the prediction secret from the public. So we're supposed to still believe it's warming. The forecasters decided not to reveal information because it was embarrassed. After wrongly predicting a barbecue summer in 2009, the BBC analyst Roger Harbin said, instead of a seasonal forecast, it offered only monthly snapshots. Uh, cars try to make, then it shows you the cars try to get their way through all the snow in, the, the, right now in Britain. They got the army out and everything with so much snow, they couldn't handle it. And all the, all the different counties cut back and getting prepared for it by not bothering to order in the sand and gravel for the roads because after all it was going to be an, a barbecue winter. And here they are under piles and piles of snow. So it's quite something what's got, what's going on, but again, you can't keep a good liar down and they all come up to the surface and get put on government positions and then they tell us how to live and what to eat, what not to eat and to be austere, etc. And now, of course, as we know, at the last Cancun meeting, the whole idea was to grab money from every country and get these traitors they call, that you call prime ministers and, and um, presidents to sign your cash away to their big businesses in third world countries. And there's no doubt about it, there were uh, a group of men at the top. There was a group of men with many foundations, many organizations. At the very beginning of the 20th century, they they existed already, of course, in previous centuries. They were under different names. And as I I mentioned before, that the Milner Group, one of the biggest groups that came forward to push forward the, the British Empire that would mutate into a world empire when America would take over for them, they, create, they created the, the Council on Foreign Relations. They created, uh, the, the, with, when they joined with the Rhodes Foundation, the Rhodes Scholarship for World Leaders, not for national leaders, but a lot of them became national leaders, by the way. And they literally brought in the kind of world they wanted to bring in. They used education to uh, completely alter the culture uh, into a single generation, raised them up, gave them out their, their, their fun for a while, and now they're bringing them all down because at the same time they planned to bring down the West uh, once they were all dysfunctional. They planned to take it down financially. And when they signed the the free trade agreement with China through the World uh, Trade Organization, uh, they knew darn well that that once that happened, all balance of trade would be anything but a balance. Uh, it would all be a one-way street from China to North America and Europe, and that's exactly what has happened. This whole farce of balance of trade is nothing more than that. It's a farce. And the only thing that goes back to China are issues of credit and debt. Uh, that's what goes back to China, IOUs. But they knew this, as I say, and they replaced it with nothing. They knew when they brought in this free trade that they were, they were going to replace it with nothing. And they called it really a service economy they'd bring in, which they'd already tried in Britain, and it failed miserably. Because when you're a service economy, you just buy things and you pass them around. The, the, the countries that manufacture the original item are the ones who bring in the cash. Without manufacture, you, you, you've had it. And they knew this too. 
And at the same time all this was going on too, they were bringing in the greening movements and they were going to use um, for depopulation purposes, and this is the real goal behind the greening movement and sustainability and all the rest of it, all the various crises of global warming, and before it was an ice age, then in the same characters turned out to global warming for a while, and their their whole goal was to use sustainability and uh, weather predictions and man-made weather uh, disasters, supposedly, to convince us that we had to be sterilized and brought and bring the population down, even though their own official charts and the UN charts show that the populations of the Western world have been plummeting because no one's having children, you see. And that's the reason your own governments come out openly and say that's why we have to have massive immigration, to pay off the national debt. That's what they tell you. So even when you've been goody two-shoes and had no children, you've had your hedonistic lifestyle and lifetime, then it doesn't please them because you can't please these monsters at the top. They have a different agenda and a different reason for lying to you, you see.